Today we're talking about carbon shoes and there is a massive problem. I'm Lindsay Perry from CoachPerry.com where we help you get fitter, faster and stronger. Today we are going to talk about carbon fiber shoes. Are they for everyone? What are the real benefits of carbon fiber shoes? And very importantly, what are the risks and dangers of using carbon fiber shoes? There is absolutely no doubt that carbon fiber shoes have moved running forward and made people faster. They are all the rage and everyone wants a pair of carbon fiber shoes. But there are a few factors that you have to consider when choosing whether a carbon shoe is right for you and more importantly what carbon fiber shoe is right for you. So let's just take a small step back and look at the history of the carbon fiber shoe. Carbon has been around for a, a long, long time and shoe manufacturers tried to put carbon into a shoe in the past. But unfortunately, what was happening is that people were getting tons of ankle injuries because it was literally placing too much stress through that ankle joint. So what has changed to make manufacturers able to put that carbon fiber plate into a shoe and for us to see the performance gains that we are seeing across the board in these new super shoes. And the first thing is, is the molds and how they are able to shape that carbon has changed the way the stress goes through the ankle joint. The reality is that that stress still goes through that ankle joint and there is a change in how the toe mechanics work as we toe off with less movement in both the ankle and less movement in the toe and that is part of the improved energy return that you get. The curve of that carbon plate and the materials that are used in the carbon fiber shoes are what allow us to now run more in that carbon shoe without seeing the same nature of injuries that we were seeing in the past. What's very important though is that those shoes were initially designed with a very specific type of runner in mind and that is a runner that uses mid to four foot strike and often people refer to those carbon plates as rockers because they do rock you straight from your midfoot onto your toe. And many of the early generation carbon shoes actually have a much narrower heel base and therefore are very inadequate for people who do heel strike. And I think that's the first point that I want to get to is that when you are looking at a carbon fiber shoe, it's important to understand what my running mechanics are and then to have a look at the shoes because there are some carbon fiber shoes that have got a slightly wider support base particularly at the heel and that will then help a heel striker to transition better from the heel through the midfield foot and then onto the toe. If you're a midfoot striker moving to the toe then you probably get away with the shoe with a much narrower heel base because you probably don't need it. The foam in these carbon fiber shoes is also much more responsive and so you've got this sort of double whammy of a much softer much lighter foam and that is why we also have quite a thick sole in most of these carbon fiber shoes because the lighter properties the extra return in those um, rubbers allow us to have a much thicker base which then also protects the foot from the stresses that are going straight through that ankle joints and going through the, the big toe. So all in all you've got a shoe that is um, much more compact, it has a much higher ener energy return and that ultimately is why you go much much faster in a carbon shoe. Those stresses have not gone away. So it's also important to know that you shouldn't be training in the carbon shoes but rather be saving those carbon shoes for racing and of course if you even if you were able to train in a carbon shoe you'd be getting yourself a new shoe every month because they also wear out much faster than your traditional shoes. I think it's important to do a little bit of training perhaps your speed work um, so that you also do get used to running in those shoes one long run if you're preparing yourself for a marathon but on the whole you'll have training shoes 
and the carbon shoes you'll keep for your um, racing shoes. The final point that I'll make when it comes to, to these uh, carbon shoes and what you should use is that there are some carbon shoes that are made for, for varying distances. Uh, so also have a look at the race that you're training for, how far you, you want to run, and that will help you determine which of those carbon shoes is best for you. So I think in summary what's really important here is to have a look and go right, what are my goals as a runner? The very early versions of the carbon shoes really were made for the Boston qualifier type of runner. Your much faster top end type of runner. The newer generation models spread that load a, a, a little bit so that most people can benefit from those um, from the, the, the improvements that the, the shoe brings. And so you, what you want to look at is what is my ability as a runner? What are my um, running mechanics? And ultimately, what is my target distance that I'm training for? Now that you've got the lowdown on carbon shoes, are you going to get enough kilometers out of those shoes to justify the spend? This video gets into that.